All right, guys, this is lesson 7-8, and in this lesson, you are going to be able to compare any fraction to one half, and you're going to be able to compare any fraction that has like numerators or has the same numerators. Okay, so for this lesson, before we work in our workbook, I want you to get a uh, plain piece of paper and pencil or get a dry erase board and marker, something that you can write down some fractions and maybe even draw some fraction circles. So if you need to, pause the video so that you can go ahead and gather some materials. All right, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to put these fractions in order um, from least to greatest. So I want you to take these fractions right here. The fractions are, in case you can't see them, I'm going to write them a little bit bigger. Um, 1 6, 1 8, 1 10th, 1 3rd, 1 4th, 1 half, and 1 fifth. I want you to take those fractions and I want you to put them in order from the smallest fraction to the greatest fraction. So go ahead and pause the video right now and give yourself a chance to write that down. Don't get any help from anybody at home. I just want to see what you think. Okay, let's check to see what you have. Now, do you have your fractions put in order this way? And I'll bet, now some of you maybe not, um, but I'll bet a lot of you have your fractions in order this way. So starting from smallest to biggest, you put one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one eighth, and one tenth. And um, every year, a lot of times boys and girls, this is the exact order that they put their fractions in um, because they're thinking, well, two is smaller than ten, right? Two is the smallest number, ten is the biggest number, so this is an order from smallest to biggest. But we have been talking about how fractions are different than whole numbers because fractions are part of a whole. So I want to show you pictures of what these fractions would look like. Okay, so this actually shows right here, one half. This fraction circle shows one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one eighth, and one tenth. So if this is how you had your fractions put in order. I want you to take a look at how that's actually quite the opposite. Okay. What do you notice about all of these fractions? And I hope that you have noticed that all of these fractions have the same numerator. Now think about what that means, um, what the numerator means. Let's always go back to pizzas because that kind of helps us think about it. The numerator is going to tell us how many slices of pizza we get to eat, right? So in every single one of these fractions, we get to eat one slice of pizza. But remember what the denominator means. The denominator is, how's that pizza cut up? In this pizza, it was sliced into two slices. If you got to eat one out of two slices, you got to eat a pretty big piece of pizza. Compared to this pizza down here, which was sliced into ten slices, and you got to eat one slice, you're eating a pretty small slice of pizza. So guys, as we're thinking about fractions and comparing fractions and putting them in order from least to greatest, I need you to remember this rule. Let's get this out of the way here. Whoops. <clears throat> well, technology still doesn't work. All right, let's get this out of the way. So here's the rule that I need you to remember. If the numerators are all the same, okay, this is if the numerators are all the same, you're getting to eat the same number of slices. You've got to think, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the slice. I mean, imagine that. If your mom cut a pizza into only two slices, that pizza, those slices are pretty darn big. But every time your mom takes that pizza cutter across that pizza and cuts it into more slices, what happens to the slices of pizza? They get smaller and smaller and smaller. So actually, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the slice. So when you're putting these fractions in order from the smallest to the biggest, um, you're going to look at something quite the opposite of this. So let's try it again. Let's put these fractions in order. Let's move out of the way here again. Let's put these fractions in order. And if you can't see them, if they're too small, let me rewrite them. You're going to put two sixths, two thirds, 
two eighths, two fourths, two tenths, and two fifths. And now you are going to put these fractions in order from the smallest to the biggest. Go ahead and pause your video so that you can do that now. Okay, and hopefully what you remembered in doing that is all of the numerators are the same. Every single numerator is two. So in the pizza world, that means you're going to get to eat two slices of pizza, no matter how it's cut. But remember, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the slice. So when that pizza is cut into 10 slices, those slices of pizza are going to be pretty small compared to a pizza that's only cut into three slices. Those pieces would be pretty big. So hopefully this is how you now put your fractions in order from um, least to greatest. All right, guys, so I need you to understand this rule. When ordering fractions or when comparing fractions that have the same numerator, now this rule works for fractions with the same numerator, here's what I need you to remember. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the slice. Okay? So let's start practicing that. Um, again, you should have your fraction circles cut out from the back of your workbook and put into a baggie that you're keeping in a good, safe place. So why don't you take out some fractions that have the same numerators? Okay, go through and pull out fractions that have maybe a 1 as a numerator, or fractions that have 2 as a numerator, or fractions that have 3 as a numerator. Go ahead and pull out fractions that have the same numerator and practice putting them in order from least to greatest or practice comparing them um, without looking at the picture and then you can flip your card over and look at the picture on the other side. All right, so now you should be able to also, this kind of goes back and reviews what we did yesterday on page 238. Um, it says, Steve is sorting the number sides of his fraction cards into two groups, fractions that are greater than a half and fractions that are less than a half. But he made a mistake. So I need you to look at all of these fractions on both sides, and I need to fit you to figure out where Steve made his mistake. So to go back and review what we learned yesterday, we know when fractions equal a half. So if my denominator is 8, then my numerator will be 4. Remember, if a fraction equals a half, then I can double my numerator, 4 plus 4, that equals 8, so I know this equals 1 half. But remember, if my numerator, if I double my numerator, 3 plus 3 is 6, well, 6 is less than 8, so I know this fraction is less than 1 half. And if I were to have the fraction 5 eighths, 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 is greater than 8, so this fraction is greater than 1 half. So go back and kind of remember those rules and see where Steve made his mistake. And then you should be able to go down through and to answer the rest of the questions on this page. Guys, something that you could try at home um, after this lesson is uh, maybe bake something, bake a batch of cookies or something, and look at the recipe. There's lots of fractions in recipes. I want you to try to um, look at the fractions in a recipe and figure out if that fraction is greater than a half, equal to a half, or less than a half. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next lesson.